I'd go to Eric Worre's wall and I would start instituting and initiating conversation with network marketers as fast as I could because he's got a wall full of generic leads that are all saying, I love Eric. You know, that's where I'd go. I'd go to his wall because there's so many people and I would just start figuring out people I had things in common with, and I'd find some network marketers to start dialogue with and get going. A hundred product users are going to find you one or two good business builders. That's the stat. A hundred business builders are going to find you 10,000 product users. Welcome to MLM Nation, a podcast of leaders, by leaders, for leaders, hosted by Simon Chan. He's built a team of over 200,000 and is now a full-time MLM coach and trainer. So if you're ready to level up your business, join us now. Let's do this. Hey, MLM Nation. What's up? What's up? Today, I want to share something with you. An episode from the past from someone that took me forever to get and for over the years has become a dear friend. And this is Tom Chenault. I still remember Tom. He was about one of the legends at that time, been over in the profession for over 20 years, had a very inspiring story I knew about. He was, uh, recur- you know, made a lot of money in the 80s, but then just was crazy and alcoholic and his life was out of control and he changed his life. And they were marking definitely was played a huge part of it. And then since then, it's become one of the legends uh, in the industry. And I remember when I first heard about him, I went to an a event great event. And I went there and kind of stalked him. I thought, oh, that's Tom, right? That's Tom. I got to go get him. And I made sure he sat in the back. I made sure once he sat down, it was those round tables, I immediately sat next to him. And then I started talking to him. And because I reached out to him and he never replied back. And then he was really cool. Yeah, here's my number. He gave me his cell phone number. We talked a little bit. And then I messaged him for today. You know what? After the event, hey, this is Simon. We met there. It was great meeting you. Love to have you on the show. And then he was just like crickets. He didn't really reply back. He said, yeah, I will. I will. I will. But he never did. Right. I think for a while it was crickets and then it took a while. He, he replied back, but he never, I'll, I'll do it, but never scheduled it. And I just followed up, followed up, followed up, followed up. And then finally I got him and he was a legend. I made him on episode 200, 200. This is the second year. This is back in 2016. So I reached out to him at the beginning. I think maybe the, yeah, the beginning of 2015. 15 and finally got the interview done in 2016, about like 18 months, uh, yeah, about 18, 20 months later, almost to a season three in 2017, we finally got him. And I still remember the I- interview as it was um, yesterday because he talked about, I don't want to give it away, but talked about how he his routine to, you know, quote, unquote, touch on someone, to give value to people, to love on them, and how to follow up with his team, talking to them. And uh, when I walk my dog, I always think about that because that's part of his routine. So anyway, I don't want to give it away. It's an awesome. Uh, since then, we've become good friends. I'm great friends with his son, Adrian. We hang out at events. It's been awesome. I just I love this profession, like the, the amount of people, good people you meet. Of course, there's bad people, just like in, this, in the industry. There's a lot of good people as well. Tom Chanel is definitely one of them. So anyway, let's Go take back the, what do you call it, a time machine and go back to episode 200 featuring Tom Chanel. ML Nation, this is Simon Chan. And for this episode 200, we got a super special guest, someone who's given so much back to the community. I am fired up to bring our special guest today, Tom Chanel. Tom, are you ready to make it happen? I am so excited. I can't even believe it, Simon. Thank you so much for letting me be on your great show. Tom Chanel is not just one of the top income earners in his company, but he's had over 20 years of experience in the network marketing profession and also given so much back to the community. You know, one of the reasons I love MLM and one of my beliefs is it allows us to give back more. And Tom definitely is a perfect example of what a giver is. Tom is one of the founders of ANMP, the Association of Network Marketing Professionals, which I highly recommend everyone should check out. Put the link on the show notes. Tom has also been voted as one of the top 25 networkers in the world and also won Trainer of the Year Award by Business for Home. Tom also has the longest-running home business radio show called the Tom Chanel Show. One of Tom's proudest achievements is being sober for over 25 years, and maybe we'll have him share a little bit about that on the show. His admirers describe Tom as caring, compassionate, and selfless, whether it's helping the homeless, helping his downlines, helping people in network marketing, or students from the local high school, or just contributing to the MLM profession, Tom is always giving back. 
So, Tom, I've just given Elma Nation just a brief intro, but please share more about your background and how you came across network marketing. You know, I came in network marketing the hard way. I was a very successful stockbroker in the 80s, and I find I found myself with two DUIs, which is driving under the influence, and two disturbing the pieces in one month. And that just equaled the fact that in 1988, I was a terrible alcoholic, even though I was a very successful stockbroker. And so I quit drinking. And my sponsor in Alcoholics Anonymous said, Tom, if you want to stay sober, you've got to stop doing what got you drunk in the first place. And so I quit my job. And I still don't know to this day if he really meant I should quit my job or just quit drinking, but I quit my job. And then I found myself unemployable, Simon. And that was crazy because I thought people would be clamoring to hire me, but I weighed 400 pounds. I was purple and I was a mess trying to get sober. I was arrogant and lots of bad stuff. And I happened upon an ad in the paper and the ad said unlimited income opportunity that appealed to me. It said no credit check, no background check. Those two really appealed to me. And I said, I can do this. And I walked into multi-level marketing that day and I've never looked back. And basically what I just did was failed forward, Simon. Now, I know I've read in the past, you said well, back in your stockbroking days, whether you're going to be a Martian or a network marketer, you said the <laughs> chances are higher that you'll be a Martian than a network marketer. So what happened at that meeting that really totally changed your perspective about the profession. I had no else to go. I had no, nothing happened at the meeting. I went into this business kicking and screaming. And when I got into it, I was even, it was worse because I thought I was so much above it and so much better than this profession. So I was my own worst enemies through my first year maybe three years in network marketing. And finally, a guy walked up to me and said, Tom, you are never going to make it. He said, everybody thinks you're this rising star, but people are basically just, they're signing up so you'll leave and they can't wait to get away from you. And until you stop making it about yourself and you start making it about other people and mean it, use your heart and love them you are going to have this false success, but I promise you, it's going to end up imploding on you and blowing up. And that guy was absolutely right. I can't believe I was able to hear that tough advice and the rest is history. So what was the turning point? You said you did, you, you know, uh, things were imploding. You bring people in, but they didn't do anything for the first three years. You're struggling. So what was the turning point? What, what was the event that happened that? Got opened up your eyes that something had to change. That guy said that, you know, I was in a breakaway comp plan and I was their rising star because I had this huge track record as a stockbroker, but I was spending more to get my check than my check was trying to keep all those legs alive because it was all about me. And where the tipping point was, was when I finally shifted my emphasis and my agenda from Tom Chenault to the leaders that I brought in the business and I became absolutely focused on their goals, even to the detriment of mine. That's when everything shifted for me and I became interested instead of simply interesting. Can you give an example, like an even more specific example of like, because uh, I hear that a lot, like, you know, focusing on others and focusing on yourself. So you gave an example of goals, but can you give it even more specific than that when you really start caring about others instead of just thinking about yourself and your check? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Everybody's a soundbite. You know, oh, I love you, all this stuff. But until your leaders and a lot of people on your team know that your eyes are popping open at two o'clock in the morning thinking about their problems, until they know that, like in their heart, that you really care about them and that you know what their goals are and you're driving them to their goals, not your goals, that's when things start to shift. Right now, I've got a community of leaders that are driven human beings. I know the name of the cat, the name of the dog, the name of the kids. I know what their goals are. I do everything I can to send them inspiration about getting to their goals, not my goals for them. I'm telling you, Simon, I'm in the foxhole with them. Mm, that's very good. 
Very, very good. Um, so it's really just about knowing the details, just really caring about people, caring people as people and not just as distributors or leaders or someone that can help your income. This business is not a numbers game. And the late Mark Yarnell, you know, he talked about that three foot rule and you're supposed to approach and all that stuff with everybody. You might be, it might be what you're supposed to do to approach all those people. But as you approach them, you approach them as human beings where you are thinking as to what you can contribute to their life, not as a prospect. So what my goal every day is to meet people, find out what's missing in their life, find out what's not missing in their life, and seeing if there's anything that I have in my bailiwick to fill that need. And most of the time, it's not my company. It's not this business. It is something more than that. All they really need is a friend or something like that. So switching my life from getting to giving has really been the difference of making it, not making it for me, Simon. Back to the journey. I'm really uh, excited to ask you this question is, in your 20 plus years, what is the toughest time or the worst moment for you in that we're marketing to the point that you maybe even regret you did this, you hated the business, but somehow you kept going. And that, and because you kept going, you learned some valuable lessons. And that's why you are where you are today. On three different occasions, I've had companies go out of business around me or me have to leave a company. And those were the worst times. And the reason was not because of the economic loss that I was looking at, it was this, it was waking up to the fact that I had taken a majorly big group of people off a cliff yet one more time. And it is the worst feeling in the world to have a company go out of business or a company owner doing something so egregious that I had to leave. So then I had to go to the people who trusted me with their leadership, with their vision, and with their future. And I had to look them in the eye and say, look, I made a mistake. This company was not what I thought it was going to be. This leader was not the man that I thought he was. And we have to make an adjustment, and we have to make an adjustment right now. And so many of those people looked me in the eye and said, Tom, I cannot believe you did this to me. I've got mortgages. I've got car payments. I've got college tuition to pay for. And you did this and now you're leaving. And having to look at those guys saying, yeah, well, I'm leaving. We're leaving. And you can go with me or you can't, but know that I'm sorry. And we've got to go start over. Those were the toughest days. But I'll tell you one thing that's great about this business is most people have had that happen to them in corporate America. But the beautiful thing about multi-level marketing is no matter what the company does, if you built that army and you've done your job, they're going to follow you anywhere as long as you treat that conversation with the utmost respect. Mm. That's really good. I never heard anyone say that before. It's just like corporate America because uh, I know from my personal experience, I would have felt guilty to leave my company because I felt I would have felt the same way exactly what you share. You let people down, but you're right. People have, you know, people experience that throughout their corporate careers. Um, so let me, let me ask you, why did you go back to network marketing? You let all these people down. Uh, by then, you probably achieved some type of success. Why do you still stuck stuck with the industry? That is so funny that you say that. I'm a successful guy, and I think that I'm going to be successful no matter what I do. I really do believe that, whether it's real estate, whatever it is. And I'll never forget the last time this happened. We were making $45,000 per month. And it, we woke up the next day and it was at zero. And my wife looked at us and we looked at each other and we go, what are we going to do? And I said, we have no choice. There is no other profession. I've seen it. We could go get a job. We could do a, a lot of things. We could start a business. But honey, there is no profession like this profession where you can start at ground zero with a $500 investment or whatever it is and build a check to what we're capable of building a check to. We made a mistake. That doesn't mean that the profession is bad. We just chose wrong and we've got to get back on that horse and build again because there's no other game like this for true financial time and health freedom. And I believe that from my 
from my core, from my soul. I don't think there's any place else that I could do this. You know, if my company tomorrow, God forbid, goes out of business, I'm age 65. I know that I could start over and build it again. And I don't know that there's many professions out there. I don't care what it is that you could do that again. You you could do that. So that's why. Now, let's share another story. I'll go through your past and take us to the time that you consider your proudest moment in network marketing. My proudest moment in network marketing, they come, they come on a regular basis. And this sounds really trite, but when I, I, I met a guy named Scott Fardulis four years ago in a restaurant and he was on his back and he had this look in his eye and he was telling me about all his great successes but i knew something was going on behind his eyes and i called him a couple more a couple of days later and i said you know i know that you told me all the wonderful things going on in your life but i don't believe you and something's going on with you and i want to have a cup of coffee so we got together we had a cup of coffee he got clear really what was going on with him he had some serious health issues he had some pain medication issues and he had some financial issues. And today that this that guy has all of those things in the rear view mirror and he has got his money turned around, his health turned around, his marriage turned around. And those are the things that are my proudest moments. All the accolades around the cars and the, all the stuff that I've gotten and, you know, trainer of the year and top 25 in the world in multi-level marketing. Those are really nice, but they're kind of empty and meaningless. My job and what I commit to is helping human beings find their greatest selves. And I did that with Scott Pardulis and a few other people. And those are my proudest moments. In your two decades in the profession, do you see people more open to network marketing now than before, than when you first got started? Oh my God, I'll never forget when I told my dad after being a, a, uh, a, uh, after being a stockbroker and a high level stockbroker for many, many years and an airplane salesman. And I found myself doing this business and I finally came home and I said, Dad, I've got to come out of the closet. He goes, I always knew you were gay. And I said, Dad, Dad, I am not gay. I am a multi-level marketer. And he said, oh, I wish you were gay. That's what my dad thought about it back wow. then, 27 years ago. And that's just almost true. But the fact is, is for so long, there was a terrible listening of the pyramid schemes But now you've got Warren Buffett buying network marketing companies. You got Donald Trump in uh, owning a network marketing company. You've got Robert Kiyosaki and all those other people that have made big quotes about this profession, whether it was Jimmy Carter or Bill Gates, that nobody knows if they really said it. So I'm not going to say what they said. But this profession finally has validation. It's a thousand times easier now than it ever was back then. Where do you see the future? If you have like a crystal ball, where do you see network marketing headed to in the next five, 10 years? Well, if you listen to Kiyosaki and Donald Trump and Harry S. Dent, the economist, it is not only going to be one of the bigger games in town for people that actually own their lives, it's going to be the only game in town because it's a cash flow business with a low cost entry that people can do while they're scrambling to keep what they're doing alive. So I think the explosion in this profession has barely even started because the awareness is finally coming into focus, but more importantly, the need and all the economic indicators worldwide point to this thing only getting much, much bigger, which is why you see all the regulation coming at us from the FTC and places like that. They do not want to get it out of so con- so out of control that it becomes rampant and dangerous. And I applaud the scrutiny, and I'm glad that we've got oversight. I know a lot of people don't believe that. We need it, but we really do, because it's going to be so big that it could get dangerous, and I don't want it to happen that way. 
Now let's、uh, shift gears. Let's talk about your radio show. You've been doing the Tom Schino show for over ten years. It's the longest running radio show about home based business, home businesses.、Uh, can you share a little bit about the show where listeners can learn more? And also, what's the vision? Why did you start that? I started it because I wanted to be famous. <laughs> okay, you're honest. <laughs> you know, I thought about coming with some trivial answer, but I decided to tell you the truth. And I realized that I was a very, very small statue on a giant pedestal called that radio platform. And I'm not an internet radio show or a podcast. I am a full blown radio show on a giant radio network. So I realized very quickly that when Art Linklater and Tom Chenault were on the radio, or Robert Kiyosaki and Tom Chenault were on the radio, and Simon Chan and Tom Chenault were on the radio, that not only do they remember those people's names, but they would also start to remember Tom Chenault. So I started filling that radio show with content many, many years ago, versus me just sitting there talking and boring people to death. So sooner or later, and I don't know when it happened, I became identified with all those big names, and that 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 award that I won for one of the top twenty five network marketers in the world is really a tribute to that because I certainly didn't deserve that. I went out to L.A. to cover the announcement of who those twenty five people were, and I was flabbergasted to hear my name announced. And I promise you, it was because of the radio show and the reach of the radio show, not my network marketing skills. And that radio show has just basically elevated me at a level I could have never elevated myself, Simon. And I feel, you know, and I don't ever let anybody sell anything on it. I don't let people run ads on it. I do it as a public interest show every week because I believe it's my only chance to give back. To an incredible profession that has literally given me my life.、Hmm. And where can people find out more about the show or, or listen in? <laughs> They go to Tom the Tom Chenault Show dot com. The Tom Chenault Show dot com. Awesome, and we'll, we'll、uh, listeners, we'll put that link in the show notes page after which we can link directly there.、Um, now you talk about giving back.、Uh, you do give back so much. I mean. From A and M P,、uh, that's actually how we met there. I mean, I just saw you on stage giving, giving, and a lot of people are talking about you. But you also give back to the community with the homeless with students. What fuels your drive? To, because you can give. Some people, everyone gives, but you seem to give more than most people I know. What fuels that passion and drive? Well, it's twofold. I mean, I, you know, you can look at it as altruistic, which is great. You know, I I, I grew up in a family of that, but. It didn't take long to to figure out that the more I give, the more I get back, and so that's it. I mean, I go down and participate with the MLMIA or with Eric Worre and GoPro or with Garrett McGrath and that crew over at the ANMP or the you know, and I give whenever I can. But what ends up happening is what I get back business wise, even business wise. Is so much because people want to be around people that are givers, not takers. So somehow, and I don't, I didn't craft this image of being this giver out there. I just thought everybody was supposed to do that, and it starts in my community. You know, there's a, there's a, we got nominated for all kinds of stuff here in Colorado because we recognize that homeless people never ever buy toiletries. They, you know, they when they get their check, and they're going to buy food, they're going to buy, they're going to buy alcohol, they're going to buy cigarettes, they're going to pay their rent, but they never buy toothpaste and shampoo and all that stuff. So we basically got together and created an army, an army of people in our community, which became an army of people all over the world, sending us all the toothpaste and hair products and the conditioner that they get at the hotels. And the next thing we knew, my garage at my house was filled with toiletries and things like that. And then we just go fill these huge bags of that stuff and go down among the homeless in Denver and in Longmont and give those bags away. And it made such a difference that I still hear from those homeless people 
20 years later that we did that for them. And there's no payback for that. However, I got paid back because the universe has blessed me with this great life. It's unbelievable, Simon. So yeah, whatever it is, the, the, the American Cancer Society Relay for Life is something. So, you know, my whole thing, my mom died of cancer. So I'm real adamant about that. Anything to do with alcohol, drug, addiction in the children and adults that it affects. I'm real good about that. And I just try to pay back in those areas as much as I can. And then God, for some reason, just rewards me handsomely for doing it. So it's maybe even selfish. It's maybe it's even selfish, the motivation, because I can't imagine not doing it because it's helped me so much be a better person. And as you know, I don't know if you know this, this is kind of interesting. Every morning, I watched a guy named Frank Kern who said, invent the perfect day for you, like your best vacation. So I watched that video and I said, you know, I'm going to do that. So every morning I get up in Longmont, Colorado at six o'clock and I take my vitamins and I walk out my door and I do a huge motivational call at 630 till 640. And it's just rah, 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 talking to tons of people about getting up and getting moving with their day. Then I walk to my AA meeting. And along the way, I pick up trash in Longmont for two reasons. One, I don't like the trash. And B, it really helps my flexibility and stay in limber at age 65. And everybody thinks I'm this great guy, but I'm basically exercising too. And I get to the AA meeting and I get to help my friends And I also check into the fact that I'm not as hip, slick, and cool as my paycheck is trying to tell me I am. I leave the AA meeting an hour later, which is 8 o'clock in the morning, and I walk down to Planet Fitness, which is another two miles down the road. I go through the stretching and the strength for old people circuit, and then I walk home. And all along the way, I'm listening to motivation or I'm calling my leaders. So by 10 o'clock in the morning, which is when we started this interview today, I've already talked to all my leaders. They're all tucked in so the competition can't call them. And everything is absolutely going smoothly. And my, I can do my day however I want now. I am free. And that's a tip that I would tell everybody to do is watch that video and I'll send it to you. And the second thing, design the perfect day for you and go do it. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm home. I've done all that already today. And I've got a smile on my face and I can generate this day with unbelievable passion. Is that cool enough? That is so cool. I'm such a believer in morning routines and rituals. And so you've walked four miles. You walked two miles to the Planet Fitness. Oh, no, 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 no. I've already got, I'm going to look at my Fitbit right now. I've already got 6.1 miles. In. That is awesome. But you say you walk two miles to the gym and then two miles back. And then you all no, no, said, I don't know what I said to you. Yep. was I walk a mile to the AA meeting yep. and I now go another two miles to Planet Fitness. So that's three out and three back. That is very inspiring. That's very cool. Really, really cool. Um, what For someone like you, what's your purpose and vision in life? What, what's your vision and your purpose? Why are you doing all this stuff? You know, it's always evolving. That is That is such a great question. And... And I don't ask that question. I think that's really, because that's a deep question. I think that's the first time I really asked that question. But you've done so much, not just in terms of making successful business, but giving back and you still do your AA. I like the way you, it keeps you humble. So yeah, so that's why I want to know, what's your vision and purpose? My vision and purpose is to, and this is one, you know, 1,000% true, is to have everybody I meet leave me having felt better about themselves than when they got there. And to do that, I have to have time and I'm probably going to need some money because most people have some circumstance going on in their life where they're going to need some help. And to be able to do that is something that is so gigantic for me. And I know that you know this. I, I deal with massive addiction, not only with myself, but with my children. And so my meaning in life is to try to help stop this real, real big wave of heroin addiction that's going on right now, I'm real committed to that. But bigger than that even, because that's 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 kind of a sidebar, I think the average human being out there 
their hope and belief in themselves, in their country, and in being alive and passionate is eroding. And my job, I really believe this, is to help lead that charge back to staying positive, taking control of our own destiny instead of letting other people dictate what our destiny is, and living as powerfully as we can, starting with each of us one day at a time. So that's kind of what it is, Simon. I read a book this year called The Surrender Experiment by a guy named Michael Singer, who's the CEO over at WebMD. And he basically said, you know, every day is just surrendering your will to God to let God bring that greatness of his power into your life instead of trying to manipulate the universe. And when I stop trying to manipulate the universe and in other words, being less of a control freak and thinking I knew what God's plan was for Tom Chenault and just letting the universe open up. Everything shifted, man. And I'll tell you, the last two years of my life have been the best two years of my life because my eyes are open that just like Mother Teresa or Gandhi or Martin Luther King or any one of those people, Tom Chenault in his own way can make a big difference among the people he's around. Thank you so much, Thomas. You wrap up some really quick questions to pick your brain. So these could be really uh, quick answers, one sentence answers. Um, and the first one is, what is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you? Holy mackerel. I would tell you, I have, I don't have one. <laughs> okay. I can't think of my, my mind is frozen. I would like to, I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to give you the answer to that because I want to think about it. Okay. Aside from your morning routine, do you have another habit that's helped you become successful? Yeah, always reach up. That is a habit that I've got. You know, I hit a big plateau in my earnings here uh, two years ago. And most people hitting that plateau would say, man, I am set for life. And all I did was go find two mentors that make twice as much as I make. And I called them on the phone and I said, I need to figure out how to get to where you are. Will you mentor me? They about swallowed their cigars. They said, absolutely. And that's something, that's a habit I've got is never accepting the status quo. Because I know with twice as much money, I'm not going to buy twice as many things. I'm going to make 10 times the difference I'm making now. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? Don't take advice from poor people. Uh, what's your favorite prospecting tool? So say someone is a qualified prospect, uh, they're interested. Do you send them, do you do send them a link to an online video? Do you sit down with them and do a flip chart presentation, use a magazine, or do you do a webinar? What do you like to use? I use something called the coffee shop interview. And uh, it's a merger of Alcoholics Anonymous, personal development, and multi-level marketing. And basically what I find out is what people want to buy. And then I find out what they don't want to buy. I figure out what they love about multi-level marketing. And I figure out what they don't like about multi-level marketing. And I don't say a word until I talk to them two days later. And then I call them back on the phone. And I present to them what they told me they wanted to buy. And I don't talk about what they told me they didn't want to buy. And as a result of that, my success rate on my first call is in the 90% because they told me what they were going to say yes to. And all I do is go back and present it to them in a powerful way. And they can finally see their way to building a big future in this great profession. Wow. So you do it um, after the coffee shop, you do it on the phone. You basically just present it to them on the phone verbally. I do it everywhere. I do it on the phone. I do it on webinars. I do it however I can get in front of somebody where I am one-on-one with them where I can interview them. I'm a talk show host, so I'm a very good interviewer. And my job is to ask the smart questions and being really good at listening to the answers. Do you have a favorite online resource like a Dropbox or Evernote or a favorite app on your phone that you could recommend? The be- Yeah, Evernote I love because I can absolutely populate anything and customize a note. Like I said, I find out what they want to buy So at the point that they tell me what they want to buy and I need to send them something in a hurry, I can pull that out of Evernote, make it look beautiful and fire it off to them in nothing flat. What's one book you could recommend to ML Nation? 
The one book I would tell people to read in MLM Nation would be two books, actually, Raising a Giant and Feeding a Giant by Bob Crisp. And even though it's 20 years old, it is the fundamentals of this business. And the fundamentals are what win the day for the average man. And we are building this business for the average man. And then you said you, uh, there was another one, you, uh, aside from Raising Giants. What's the other one? Feeding a Giant. Oh, Feeding got, a Giant. Yeah. Same authors, two books he wrote at the same time. Got it. I got to check that out. Thank you for referring. And ML Nation, I know you love audio. So if you haven't already, you can get an amazing free audio book at mlmnationbook.com. That is mlmnationbook.com. Uh, so Tom, do you have your success quote? Did you think about it? Or we, uh... <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, no, never mind. I we... about it. We're going to have to worry about it another day. Okay. I, uh, I Like I said, I'm not the smartest tack in the box. <laughs> I'm a... Oh, So here's the last question. The million dollar question. You ready? Yeah. Here's the million dollar question. Imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one. So you didn't even know your wife, you didn't know your kids, grandkids, zero. So you're kind of like an alien that went to another planet and they spoke English. But you had all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing you would do to find prospects or the first place you go to find prospects and build an MLM business from scratch? I'd go to Eric Worre's wall and I would start instituting and initiating conversation with network marketers as fast as I could because he's got a wall full of generic leads that are all saying, I love Eric. You know, that's where I'd go. I'd go to his wall because there's so many people and I would just start figuring out people I had things in common with and I'd find some network marketers to start dialogue with and get going. That would it just be in laser straight and Eric Worre might not even be that happy to hear that. <laughs> you know what? Here's the deal. A hundred product users are going to find you one or two good business builders. That's the stat. A hundred business builders are going to find you 10,000 product users. And if I had to start over tomorrow, I have to go with that ratio. I can't go with the two out of a hundred. I've got to go with the, with the network marketers that are out there looking for me. Mm, so I just repeat that. That's really good. No one's ever said that. A hundred product users will give you one to two business builders, right? And a hundred business builders will give you a thousand product users. No, a hundred. I then I misspoke that. A hundred business builders will give you 10,000 product users. 10,000. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Just think about it. Go back the other direction. Yep. If you get, if you, if you've got a company and you get a hold of a Tom Chenault and I fall in love with you, I'm going to find you a hundred product users tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. So that's the way I would rather go. So when I go fishing, I go fishing in the business builder pond because I know that I'm also going to get product users. But sometimes when you're fishing in that product user pond, you don't really catch many business builders. Hey, I love your answer to that question because it's really no BS, no hype. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of like the elephant in the room that no one wants to dress. And you're the <laughs> first one, honest and very direct. You know, you're going to find where the people are. So uh, thank you so much, Tom, for your time. As we wrap up, any last words of advice? And then what's the best way our listeners can connect with you and learn about you and your show? Okay, I would go to Tom, the Tom Chenault show.com because then you're going to get that coffee shop interview I talked about. You're going to get my phone number. So the name of the game is Spelling Chenault, right? Which is T-O-M-C-H-E-N-A-U-L-T dot com. And the advice I would give you is wait for no one. Your upline's not going to do it for you. Your company's not going to do it for you. Tom Chenault's not going to do it for you. All of those people will do it with you. But grab the bull by the horns. And the way that you do that is to get your belief level in this so much that you're like me. I know that I can go put $500 up and turn it into a million-dollar income. And if you truly have that belief like I have, you will stop at nothing to fulfill that. So that's my advice I would give you. MLM Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you've been hanging out with Tom Chenault. So keep up the momentum and go to MLMNation.net and type in, just type in Tom, T-O-M, in the search bar and the show notes and Tom's contact info. The link to the show will be right there. In order to be successful in network marketing, you must help others. So Tom, 
thanks again for sharing your valuable time with ML Nation. We're grateful to you and we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Tom, thank you so much again and God bless you. I love you, Simon. See you later, baby. Bye-bye. All right, everyone, there it is, Tom Chanel. And by the way, if you don't know, we have over 300 episodes, old episodes from the first couple of years of ML Nation. Yes, we've been doing it for almost 10 years now. That we were way before anyone, I know there's a lot of interviews, stuff out there, way before anyone does, did it in direct selling, we were doing them. If you want to check these old episodes out, it's in a separate podcast called ML Nation Archives. And the reason we did it, we had so many episodes, I think for storage space, whatever, uh, iTunes at that time made us create a separate podcast. So there's actually two ML Nations, ML Nation Archives, the oldies but goodies from episode one to 300 and then afterwards the current, uh, the current show. So by the way, if you like this, please subscribe to the archives, subscribe to archives and subscribe to ML Nation. A lot of people have been asking me about, it, and you know, sometimes you always want the new, the new, 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 but we're in a timeless profession. The values stay the same. At the end of the day, it's still a relationship business, right? People say, oh, AI this or whatever. It's still a relationship business. It, the platforms may change, but the principles, the psychology is still the same. If it wasn't the same, then these network marketing companies, they wouldn't need us, right? They would just use AI, or use advertising, use bots, and build a business themselves. They just sell on Amazon themselves. They wouldn't need people. They would just hire employees. But they pay us the commissions because at the end of the day, it still works, and it's a relationship-driven business, and there's certain values. Just like Tom, the way he follows up with people, the way he connects with people, those values values are timeless, whether it was from 70 years ago, 100 years ago when direct selling got started, I think 150 years ago when direct selling got started, to network marketing get started in the 70 years ago to today, those values are timeless. I want you to go back and listen to them. So anyway, uh, feedback, give me some feedback. Uh, I'll always open, to, if you'd like to hear more of these, let me know. Go subscribe to ML Nation Archives as well, and uh, take action what you learn. And hey, that's what I got. Connect with Tom Chanel as well. That's that's why I got connect with him. He's an amazing individual. Go follow what him and his son are doing, doing great stuff. All right, everyone. Take action where you learn and have an amazing day and go out there, have a positive impact on someone's life. God bless. You.